Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and repents of evil. Let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto humankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Father, grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them, and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy, and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The readings is from Numbers. From Mount Hor, they sent out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous servants among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it out on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and, and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A response to the first reading is the prayer of Manasseh. O Lord, Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned. And I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent. And in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me, in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, 
so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response to the second reading is the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, and as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. For to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Together, let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation, and do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy judgments of people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, by saving out among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit.
Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which giveth life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, all of you. I wish I could see you, but I know you're there, and I'm here. So, good morning. Okay. This subject is a little bit touchy for a lot of people, and it is for me, too. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to lower your defenses a little, take a chance, because you know... I have good news for you in the long run. In my line of work, maybe more than most, I hear people asking, why me? Why did God take my job or my home or my spouse? Why am I bombarded with troubles? Why am I always the victim? Why does this happen to me? Now, I have to tell you that the very first answer that leaps into my mind is always, why not? Of course, I don't say that out loud. It's much less than helpful, you know. Uh, but really, why not you? Why not me? Why should I not be subject to the same laws of nature that apply to everyone else. Buddhist, Buddhist communities, Buddhist, hmm, Buddhist communities talk about a woman who came to the Buddha and said, why me? Why did my child die? And the Buddha said that if she would bring him a single grain of mustard seed from a family that had never had a loss or a tragedy, then he would be able to explain it to her. Of course, she came back having found that everyone has pain and loss. And in that moment, she was enlightened. Cool. Elsewhere, the Buddha tells us that asking why about anything is like being shot with an arrow and insisting on knowing who shot you and how and what kind of wood the arrow was made from before you seek treatment for the wound. Ultimately, why doesn't matter. What matters is what do we do about it? And in our scripture today, both old and new, God is offering us a sovereign remedy for our chronic victimhood. Instead of saying, let me explain it to you, or why not you, or get over it, God tells us where to look for the only solution that really works. I won't keep you in suspense. The remedy for our pain, our suffering, our bitterness is to look up at the bronze serpent on the pole in the desert. The brazen serpent is a metaphor for Christ raised on the cross. In other words, whenever you feel victimized, look to the cross. Let me explain that idea a little bit. Today we find the Israelites complaining against God and against Moses in the wilderness. That darn God, that darn Moses. Have you noticed that our forebears were the complainingest people? And they're usually complaining about the food situation. So these folks take the art of feeling like victims to its highest achievement. So Moses goes to God and God sends 
fiery serpents to bite them, bite them. Well, yikes. I mean, golly, we're sorry, Moses. Gosh, yes. Please tell God to take the snakes away. So God says to Moses, make a big snake out of bronze. Stick it up on a pole and tell them, God says, to look at the bronze snake on the pole when they get bitten. And then they won't die. Cool. Notice, please, that God essentially says when they're bitten, not if they're bitten. The bad news, there are still snakes. Snakes happen. There will be snakes. You will inevitably be bitten. The good news, God has seen to it that we have a remedy. And the remedy lies in looking up. In our gospel for today, Jesus and Nicodemus are talking. And Jesus is trying to explain to Nicodemus about the whole new way of being in relationship with God. Cool. Nicodemus is bewildered. He just, he doesn't get it. You know, we love that verse at John 3.16. We see it referenced everywhere. Bumper stickers, people with multicolored clown wigs holding up signs at sporting events, billboards everywhere. We love to hear it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Martin Luther calls it the gospel in a sentence. But we don't get to stop listening at verse 16. There's more. There is better news for real life here than a simple God loves you. Which is nice, but ultimately neither news nor is it helpful. Let's look at what lifted up means in the Gospel of John. Jesus will be lifted on the cross, yes, but for John there's a lot more to lift it up, especially in Greek. Jesus is lifted up at the transfiguration for John. Jesus is lifted up at the resurrection. Jesus is lifted up at the ascension. Jesus is lifted up whenever God is glorified. And whenever we look for Jesus, who is, in fact, the very glory of God, we're invited to raise our eyes and lift up our hearts. Nicodemus comes looking for good news in the night, in the dark, so he won't be seen by his fellow Pharisees. And Jesus says, that our new relationship with God is going to be characterized by light. God's light has come into the world and is going to illuminate everything, even sneaky Pharisees. Mm -hmm. So, don't be doing anything you don't want to be seen doing. God's new arrangement is the sunrise on a dark night of the soul. We will finally be able to see. The relationship Nicodemus is accustomed to with God is all about the rules. God gave his chosen people the law so that they could be right with God by keeping the rules. That's pretty good. But by the time Jesus came along, the religious leaders had created such a tangle with all the rules. You, you, you could break one rule by keeping another. Which is more important? 
it was dis it was confusing, it was disheartening, it was a no win catch twenty two situation. So when Jesus says God doesn't want to condemn anyone, God loves the world. Just believe it. Here, let me show you how. It's a whole new way of being. So here are some multiple choice situations for you. Somebody cuts you off in traffic in a very dangerous way. Do you, one, drive like crazy to catch up with them and then punch them in the snoot? Two, get their license plates so that you can get them in trouble with the CHP? Hmm? Or three, do you look to the cross? Remember that we are all damaged in one way or another and send up a quick prayer for that other driver. And finally, we vow to be even more careful than we already are. Pretty good. Let's say there's somebody you righteously detest at your office. She's a liar. She's a cheat. She takes credit for other people's work. She just makes you so angry. You could just, you could scream. Do you, one, scream? That would be unexpected and alarming and might end up making you look like the loony one. What about two? Take her aside and read her the riot act about how bad she is, how you're not going to tolerate it anymore. What do you think is the outcome of that? Or what happens if instead we three look to the cross? Really, honestly, I promise you, if you give the Holy Spirit one split second, she will intervene on your behalf. Maybe you decide that being angry with your nemesis is harmful to you. Hmm? So you resolve to pray for her and to cut her a wide berth at the same time. Maybe you set aside assigning blame for one moment and take a deep breath of the Holy Spirit. You are refreshed and she no longer has any power over you. Cool beans, no? It's wonderful how calming and relaxing life becomes when we get into the habit of looking at the risen Lord before we react to things. Remember that Jesus' story and our own stories are the same story. Remember that we're joined together. We join our lives to his at baptism so that he and I, are, he, and, he and we are one. He and I, he and you, he and all of us are one just as he and God is one. God doesn't create disasters to get our attention, but God does give us a remedy that is strong to save and is here for us any time at all. Furthermore, God only, not only, God only, God not only redeems us from skinned knees and broken hearts, you know, God also redeems us from death and destruction and the grave, those strong things. Time heals small wounds. God heals big ones. So then, what are you going to do next time your righteous indignation tells you you're being victimized? You'll lash out in anger? Oh, that works well. You're going to try to fix the other person? Here's a hint, don't. Or are we going to lift our eyes to the cross and to the risen Lord? Surely it makes what would Jesus do 
that question is a lot more relevant, isn't it? Amen. Bless you all. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church and the world, saying, O gracious Lord, have mercy upon us. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word hast taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks to all peoples, receive these, our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee, to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. 
and grant to all those who do confess thy holy name, may agree in the truth of thy word, thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. O gracious Lord, have mercy upon us. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Mark, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we lift up to you this day the Anglican Church of Chile. In our Episcopal Diocese, we pray for St. Mark's Church in Crockett. In our local community, we pray for Alameda County Detention Ministries. O oh, gracious Lord, have, have mercy, mercy upon Lord. us. And to all the people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. In our weekly cycle of prayer, we lift up to you these members of our congregation. We pray for Peggy and Dan, Allison, John, Gail, Xavier, and Felix as well as those in military service for Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, and Taylor. O oh, gracious Lord, have mercy upon us. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Gavin, our governor, Bob, our mayor, and all in assemblies or judicial roles at every level of government, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace the world. O oh, gracious Lord, have, have mercy upon us. Open, O oh Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in the whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. O oh, gracious Lord, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Olivia, Becky, Brett M., Carl, Carol, Mother Carol, Kathy, Chalopi M., Dave R., David, Aaron, Esteban, Miroslava and Tamara, Glennis, Geraldine, Umberto and family, and Candida and family, Janice, Jim and Janet, Josh, Joanne, Lisa B, Luke, Marge and family, Marie R, Mary L, Mary M, Marissa and family, Monty and Judy, Nick, Nina, Michael, Sandra, and Henrietta, Sarah, Michael E, Sylvia P, Steve W, and children, Tamara S, the Herman family, the Purcell family, the Moon family, the Ruzika family, the Bohr family, and the Montgomery family. And we also pray for the first responders during the COVID 
epidemic. For all nurses, doctors, police, firefighters, and educators, and especially Brad O and Brad S. We wish for healing prayers for all God's creatures in Japan, still recovering from the Great East Japan earthquake and the tragedy at Fukushima. May you all feel God's love for love and warmth for you. And we pray for all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. O oh, gracious Lord, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed in this life, in thy faith and fear, especially Sharon H., Linda G., John M., Marie R., Vern P., Joan B., and Elda M., beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. O oh, gracious Lord, have mercy upon us. Grant these our prayers, O oh Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us now join our voices in giving thanks to God who hears all our prayers. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all our mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Amen.